It's now time to talk about what's going on in the cattle markets, and uh, there's never a shortage of issues. <laughs> we know this for sure. It's uh, Let's do the beef market update with Ann Wasco with the Gateway Livestock Exchange, like we always do. Ann, how are you doing today? I'm great, Sean. How are things there? <laughs> Pretty good. Um, good. Yeah, really good. Uh, boy, the uh, the smile, right? Like, the grass conditions in, let's just pick on Western Canada, and like, they're significantly better than they were this time last year, the year before. Like, th- this is really, this is great to see. It's about time. Yeah. I've heard some ranchers say they've had more this spring than they've had in the last three years combined. So, yeah, I mean, that's an extreme, obviously. But, um, yeah, conditions are substantially better for most of us. Yes. It's awesome to see. Great to see. Let's get a bit of an update. What's going on uh, with cash market? Well, it's kind of been one of them quiet starts uh, to June, I'll tell you that, Sean. Um, Even in the U.S., we've got pretty quiet business so far. There were some bids in the south in Texas and Kansas around 185, but most of that's been passed. That would have been a buck lower had it been... uh, had it been made into sale. So really not much to tell you about in the south. Um, the north, there's been a, a wee bit of trade in Iowa at 188. That's a couple bucks lower than last week. And again, not not much in volume at all. And a little bit of dress trade at 302 delivered, which would be steady. So kind of just picking and finding some markets. I suspect by the time the week finishes, remember this is our first full week after the Memorial Day a uh, week. So, you know, maybe just a little slow to get going, but uh, there could still be business by the close of the week. But as the, at the time when we're speaking, it, it's certainly still been very quiet. Um, we did see, we know we had that smaller cutout um, through the short, the holiday week last week. And this week's kill has continued in the U.S. to be, you know, not as aggressive as, say, a normal post Memorial Day week. And so that means that we've got the cutout that climbs a little bit more. You know, smaller slaughter um, has certainly helped support this cutout. So the choice was up two bucks um, at the end of this week compared to last week. That puts it at 316. And the select now is about 15 bucks back, Sean. So that's a little closer to what kind of quote a normal spread would be for this time of the year. If you recall, really right up until May, we saw a really narrow choice select spread as, you know, more products um, were being uh, out of that select cutout were being pegged to be uh, ground and uh, part of that lean trim market that's been, you know, record high. So that's kind of how the wholesale market's going to close out a bit higher, but uh, mostly because of a smaller kill. Now, bringing that Fed market back to Alberta, um, trade this week, 440 delivered dressed. Um, That is steady to two bucks higher. That will, we haven't seen the Canfax average yet, but it will mean another um, new all-time high for the Canfax Canfax average. And it also means that our spot basis, we moved to a premium level last week. And that means this week we're going to be anywhere from three to five over, depending on when when and where the U.S. market ends up trading at. But again, a very strong market vis-a-vis the U.S. And... um, you know, this Canadian dollar for, you know, one day it's under 73 and the next day it's just over. But the bottom line, it really hasn't, tra- you know, traded far from 73. And that means it's been pretty supportive to this whole cattle market situation as well. So that's yeah, the like, update. yeah, and, and it, that you're mentioning at the time we we're having the discussion, we're having the discussion uh, on, on Thursday night based on <laughs> crazy travel schedules for the both of us. So um, I, I think... One of the things that I've been, you mentioned the currency and the exchange of the Canadian dollar, and we saw this week Bank of Canada lower by 25 basis points. Now, we haven't seen the Fed drop yet, but we know the Fed's going to drop rates at some point here. The expectation is in 2024, a lot of people are thinking it's going to happen in in September. So it's almost like it's, it's, that's kind of priced in. We're not, it, we, you know, theory says that we should see that Canadian dollar drop, but it maybe hasn't launched lower. It did, you know, it did, it did, it did temporarily. Like when the announcement first came out, it dropped to, I think, like 72.25 or something like that, but quickly shot back up mm-hmm. to, to over 73. So definitely something that exporters, cattle, pork, and, and others are, are watching. Um, what about, uh, did you mention basis? 
Yep. So a strong basis again, um, picking up to probably, like I say, three to five bucks over the U.S. market when uh, the dust yes. settles. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. another strong move. And, you know, June, of all of the months of the year, Sean, June is this, typically the strongest basis month for Alberta cattle feeders. So um, we're starting we're starting off in great shape, especially if it, if it gets better as we go through the month. Okay, so what do we need to know about uh, live export data for April? Well, StatsCam did come out with their April data, and I know that sounds like it's really, really old, but that's our most current numbers. But I did want to share with you, and we knew this, we talked about this last month when we got this data, Fed cattle exports really picked up. This would be in the month of April, so a lot of this business would have even potentially been done in March. And remember where our basis was in March, Sean? Minus Mm, 20, minus 25, right? So, of course, there was a lot of business being done with uh, with U.S. packers, and we did see the final data. We knew this was going to happen, but here's the final data. Fed cattle exports in the month of April were, were up 51% from last year. That makes uh, year-to-date numbers. For, so the first four months of this year were up 30% in our fat cattle exports. But everything was up, Sean. We had cow exports up 45% in April. Year-to-date, it's still down 2 but it just shows you, uh, you know, how busy things got in April in terms of cattle moving, moving south. And even on the feeder side, not big numbers, but they were still even up 7% from April of 2023. So um, it was a busy month, uh, cattle moving south. And certainly that big fat cattle export would have been a key turnaround time in terms of this basis improvement. Yeah, the trucking industry doing well with those kind yep. of numbers. Uh, and let's uh, retail meat prices for April. The stats can release those as well. Yeah, it was a busy week for stats can with some some beef news. I you know this one again. We came into the second quarter. That's our grilling season, and guess what? Beef prices were up at the counter. So Canadians, this is the average across Canada. Retail beef prices were up eleven percent in April versus last year in April. Pork prices, on the other hand, were unchanged from a year ago. Chicken prices were actually down 4%. Hmm. So if it felt like you were seeing a little bit of that sting at the counter in April, then that certainly uh, uh, was materialized and showed up in this StatsCan data that shows these beef prices were um, pretty stout for the month. The other thing that uh, a lot of people in Ontario are talking about is the fact we've got the, uh, the, the Cargill plant just outside of Guelph. And the strike that's been happening there this week, that, uh, you know, anytime there's a strike with the processor, it does create some concern. Yeah, the processing facility for sure. And so, again, when you've got, and I, you know, you've covered this story, but uh, when you've got the largest plant in the province uh, not operating, uh, certainly that uh, that really is putting pressure on uh, on on those that are feeding cattle uh, in the in the east, and um, that. I guess we'll see how things play out. Um, it's from from where I sit, certainly been quiet. I see it in the data. Obviously, the kill, you know, the week before last was was considerably smaller with just the small plants uh, basically operating. So, all eyes on that one. But certainly something that uh, we don't need uh, any of these uh, extra issues in terms of getting cattle to market, especially you know Ontario producers. So uh, we're still getting you know cleaned up with some of that that winter supply. Uh, Western producers had kind of moved into their calf feds and were current, but, you know, uh, I think Ontario cattle feeders still needed to get cleaned up, and that's only going to, you know, increase in its intensity as we move forward. Yeah, and we're going to have an interview with, uh, I think, the president of the Beef Farmers of Ontario up this weekend. So that'll be in our cattle email on, on Monday. So if you want more information on that topic, uh, definitely check out that, that interview for sure. And, and finally, of course, the CBSA potential strike and what's happening there. That's another issue that uh, could impact the beef industry. Variables out of our control. I think that's what we've established here. Ed. Yeah, I mean, we started off this interview today talking about the great moisture and these record cattle prices, but they've got all these outside factors, uh, and we always do. In March, we were talking about avian influenza and the dairy cattle yeah. um, herds in the U.S. So, you know, it's whether it's strikes, whether it's border issues, I mean, those are the things that uh, really, really cause havoc when uh, when we're not able to prepare or, or predict them. So that's Absolutely. the volatility piece for sure. Okay, well, hey, enjoy uh, that long grass this weekend. And uh, all, all the best to you. Thanks so much for joining us here for the Beef Market Update. 
safe travels home. Thanks, Sean.